Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Okay, that was a close call. You guys remember that last sketch? When we covered the workup of restrictive lung disease? We had a full-on riot on our hands. Eh, women's rights, antitrust laws, kids and stuff. Come on, we're at the turn of the century, people. It's called the Bell Epoch, not the Wine Epoch. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to kick back and uh, hang out in my hoity-toity garden. All right, see the governess's tight, restrictive corset in the window there? It should remind you of our last sketch, where we provided a brief overview of restrictive lung disease, which is characterized by reduced lung compliance and reduced lung volumes on spirometry. The FEV1, FVC, and TLC are low, even though that FEV1 over FVC ratio is paradoxically normal or high. We also distinguished between extrinsic and intrinsic pathologies. Whether it's the tissues surrounding the lungs that are non-compliant, or the lungs themselves. For the rest of this chapter, we're going to get into those intrinsic lung pathologies. Diffuse parenchymal lung diseases collectively referred to as interstitial lung diseases. Notice the fibrotic pulmonary tree in the center there? It's going to be our recurring symbol for pulmonary fibrosis. Now, pulmonary fibrosis is not its own disorder. Instead, it's a component of many of the interstitial lung disorders. See that idiot sign on the butler, though? Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is its own defined syndrome, and it's considered the prototypical fibrosing disorder. In other words, if you understand idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, you at least understand the fibrotic aspect common to many of the intrinsic lung diseases throughout this chapter. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis specifically accounts for about 30% of all restrictive lung disease cases. Males are affected more often than females, and approximately two-thirds of patients are older than 60 years of age at presentation. The first thing to know about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, however, is that it's, well, idiopathic. They haven't quite figured out what's causing the initial inflammatory event that triggers fibrosis. But the underlying process is actually summed up quite nicely by the disorder's other name, cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis. Cryptogenic, meaning of unknown origin, fibrosis, as in the characteristic patchy but progressive interstitial fibrosis, and alveolitis, meaning that something is causing repeated cycles of inflammation to the alveoli. See those grape bunches in the back? They kind of look like the alveolar airspaces of the lung, right? Notice, too, that we've scattered a few especially red and inflamed-looking bunches in there as well, to depict repeated cycles of alveolitis. 